Soldier weighed between 145 and 160 pounds. But if you keep that in mind, the amount of gear that they carry also weighed as much as he did. So you're looking at about 300 pounds of stuff going out the door of the aircraft. Depending on the kind of weapon system, you could have an M1 rifle, which was broken down in a Griswold bag, or not. Get rid of the bag, stick it down between your reserve chute and your harness, kind of secure. You could add a carbine, which is currently in the holster. That straps to your, be to your belt and then your leg. Each of the soldiers carry two to three knives, depending on the weapon they carry, for very practical purposes. Most of them were issued the M3 fighting knife. They carried an M2 switchblade, which I do not have in here. I'll get one for the next box. But it fit right here, and that was designed to cut the shroud lines. Or, if they had an M1 rifle, they might have a bayonet as well. So, I mean, you're, you're talking knives all over the place. Uh, could have carried a pick matic. Could have carried a shovel. Depends. Personal preference, or sometimes it's actually set up that every fourth or fifth guy would carry one or the other. Rations. This represents one day's rations. Three meals. They were supposed to be relieved after three days. So they were given nine rations. The musette bag's not that big. That's up on the top. And I'll show you how that looks on a guy here shortly. So you're carrying in that bag as many rations as you possibly can get in there that you were issued. Probably your shaving kit. Probably a spare pair of socks, t-shirt. Air shorts, and you know, not a lot else. Because you're also carrying ammunition. Grenades, this one represents a carrier. If you had your choice, Red will tell you, he could take as many or as few as he wanted. You picked how many red? Hand grenades? Huh? Hand grenades? Well, I took two, but you could have your, take as many as you wanted. Great big box full, just help yourself. Whatever you thought you needed. Uh, kind of walk past, just snatch them up, put them in pockets, things like that. M1 ammunition bag, full bandolier, protective mask carrier. Some guys carried the mask in there, some did not. And then, of course, you got your May West. Right. Well, before I start this piece, the other thing is this uniform's cotton poplar. It was impregnated with something to protect the soldiers in the event of a chemical attack, so it didn't breathe. Very, very warm. And they had a wool shirt on underneath, possibly a wool pair of pants, possibly wool underwear. Red, what did you have underneath your jump jacket and pants? Well, I had long johns, the, the winter underwear, and then also on that I had my regular dress shirt and pants, and then on top of that I had the uniform here. Wow. It was June, right? So, <laughs> so it's quite a bit. And how long was it before you got a chance to change? Well, I have a letter at home writing to my mother, and it took 10 days before I was able to take any of my clothing off. So, you understand how that goes. Now, we have this configured right now for a guy who's carrying a Thompson submachine gun. It varies a little bit. He happens to have a bayonet here, two canteens. The parachute pack, static line, protective mask, serve, look to May West. All right, now, in theory, and there are many marshlands which are clearly indicated on, right behind the beaches and also scattered throughout the drop zone area. In theory, soldier hit the water, he inflated. What's wrong with that? trap. <laughs> exactly. So it's very difficult, if, if at all. The other thing is, with this configuration of harness, which is a World War II type harness, there's no quick release. At that point in the war, the United States did not use a quick release harness. So you either had to unbuckle it or cut it. There are, and in France, probably to this day, there are many pieces of buckles and harnesses that still exist.
give you a sweep. You can hang your elbow out the side of the window and fly along all the time. Oh, that's a two pitch. That's a one of them. That's a two pitch. 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 That's a Interstate L6, Jim, right there. Yeah, let's help the helper is the L2 and the L3. It's bigger than I thought. 